All right, so last week we were looking at uh, ratios. We were looking at the fractions, how to write cosine, sine, tangent, cosecant, like all these ratios that we learned last week. Now we're actually going to use it. I remember back in the days, you know, a few weeks back, we learned Pythagorean theorem that in order in a right triangle with Pythagorean theorem, in order for you to know one measurement on one side, I had to give you the other two. Now we're going to move in into what if I just know one side, one side of a triangle, and I want to know a second side. But in this case, I do know one of my angles. Beside the 90 degree angle, I do know one of my other angles. Now, as a reminder, last week when we talk about the ratios, remember we had a right triangle. In one corner, I will say theta, sometimes I call, or I use a letter, right? But there's a specific corner and there was a 90 degree angle. We said the biggest side was hypotenuse. Remember that? We, we mentioned that last week. And then from theta, from theta, the other two sides, we will call one of them opposite, the other one adjacent. And opposite, we said, it meant the side that is far away from theta. Adjacent is the side that is close to theta. So we could label opposite and adjacent. We're going to use that idea for, for today's work. So I'm going to work questions 19. I'm going to start 19 through 24. Finding the missing side and round the answer to the nearest tenth. So my answer is going to come in decimals. I'm going to round it to the nearest tenth. Now, tenth, as a reminder, it sounds like the number 10. It's a number with one zero. So my answer should be to one decimal place. Okay, so what I'm going to do, based on the 18 degrees, because here to have a degree, right? Right where the degree, that's where theta will be. Based on the 18 degrees, I notice I don't have the hypotenuse. Right? I have no information about the hypotenuse. I just have information about the opposite side and the adjacent. And for today, I want to be using an acronym that I mentioned last week. I mentioned last week about an acronym, so ka toa. Now, sign what the so toa means. So so is sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So sign opposite over hypotenuse. Ka what ka tells me is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then toa tells me that tangent is opposite over adjacent. I know I'm, I talk about six ratios last week, right? I talk about cosecant, secant, and cotangent, but I'm only going to use sine, cosine, and tangent. The reason why I'm going to use those three only is because I'm going to use a calculator. And on the calculator, I see the keys. One of them is the key S-I-N. The other one, I see the key C-O-S. And the third one, T-A-N. Now, we don't read those as sin cos 10, right? We read those as sine, cosine, tangent. I'm going to abbreviate it using the first three letters because imagine if I write the whole thing, imagine how big the letters in tangent will be, right? They will be very, very small. So we're going to abbreviate it only using the first three letters, okay? So now here, question number 19, I have the opposite and the adjacent. So thinking the O and the A, is that sine, cosine, or tangent? In this case, it will be tangent because I know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So I'm just going to write tangent, tangent of 18 degrees is equal to, I know it's O over A. So let me write 15 over X. Now it will be nice. It will be nice if the X was on the top the top of my fraction because I would just say all right multiply both sides by 15 right if I had x over 15 I will say just multiplied both sides by 15 and you're good to go but my x is at the bottom now let me show you something really quick let me make my my fraction my first fraction over one and there's a cool trick that we do in mathematics really cool trick when we have two fractions equal each other, we can just flip the fractions and they're still going to equal to each other. So what I mean with that is I'm going to have one 
over tangent of 18 is equal to x over 15. Pretty cool, huh? So I, I flip both fractions. Now x is on top. Now to get x by itself, wouldn't I just need to multiply both sides by 15? So I get x by itself. So it gives me 15, because notice on the top, I'm going to multiply 15 times 1. So 15 over tangent of 18. Now, before I, I continue on this question, one thing I want to emphasize. If I was doing fractions, so like, let me do something really quick. If I was looking at fractions and I had 42 over 4, it will make no sense if I just cancel the 4s and then say this is 2. Right? 42 divided by 4 equals 2. That makes no sense, right? That, that, that's, that's false. Now, if I have something like tangent over 18, I mean, tangent of 18 divided by 18, do me a favor and do not cancel the 18th, right? That's what we're going to say in mathematics. That is nonsense, right? 42 divided by 4, canceling the 4 makes no sense. The same thing, tangent of 18 over 18, if I have these things, do not simplify the 18th. Tangent of 18 is a whole number by itself. It's a big, big decimal. It's a never-ending decimal. So don't, don't cancel the 18th. Instead, look at tangent of 18 as a whole number itself. You cannot break it apart. So I'm just going to use my calculator. And I'm going to do, right, coming back to numbers, number 19, x is 15 divided by tangent of 18. I'm just going to use a calculator. And I'm going to solve for this. Let me bring out a calculator. I'm going to use the calculator you guys are going to be given in Canvas. The way tangent of 18 is, is typed depends on your calculator. Sometimes you have to press tan, tangent first and then 18. Sometimes you have to press 18 and then tangent. It depends on your calculator. I know some of you guys are going to be using iPhones, the calculator from your iPhone. iPhone, you have to do it backwards. Tangent of 18, you do 18 first and then tangent. But the calculator I'm going to use, I'm, I have to type in tangent first and then 18. Again, it varies according to your calculator. So I'm going to use the one you have access to in Canvas. Now, because we're dealing with degrees, I want to emphasize here on the left, there's an RAD. That's radians. Make sure, make sure you're dealing with degrees. So I'm going to flip this. And it says degrees. If you're using a different calculator, make sure you're dealing with degrees. And I'm just going to type this in. 15 divided by tangent. There's a TA. Tangent of 18. Close my parentheses. Oops. Not 180. It's tangent of 18. So let me do this again. 15 divided by tangent of 18. My parenthesis is up here, so I close that up. Now, let me press equal. It gives me a long decimal. Remember how I said rounded to the nearest 10th, so one decimal place. I do see that the second decimal place is big enough, right? I see 46.16. The second decimal place is big enough, so that 6 is going to push the 1 up. My answer in this case will be 46.2. So let me just write that down. 46.2. That's it. That's how big my x is. Do another example. Let's take a look at number 20. First, let me start by naming the site. That's in opposite hypotenuse adjacent. The 20 is the hypotenuse. Based on the 54 degrees, X is the adjacent. So A and H, use the acronym SOKATOA. The one that says the A and the H, the one that has A and H is cosine. So let me write this as cosine of 54 is equal to X over 20. 
Nice, the X is on top. So I'm just gonna multiply both sides by 20. So I have the 20 times cosine of 54 is equal to X. So I'm just gonna grab my calculator. Oh, I forgot to mention the work here. So here it is, right? My 20 was my hypotenuse, my X was my adjacent. You guys see that I have cosine of 54 equals X over 20. Cancel the 20, so I have 20 times cosine of 54 is equal to x. Okay, so let me grab my calculator now. And I'm just gonna go, let me clear this up. Make sure you still have it on degrees. So I'm gonna go 20 times cosine of 54, close my parentheses. Sometimes a closing the parentheses doesn't affect the question, but I'm gonna close it so we get used to always closing it. I'm gonna press equal to. So 11.75. The second decimal number is big enough, so the seven is gonna be pushed up. So my answer is gonna be 11.8. Okay, so let's come back here. So my X is gonna be 11. Point eight. Okay, let's do one more question. Let's take a look at number 21. Again, I'm working today up until 24. So I see I have the hypotenuse. For us to not get confused, let's switch this to blue. This is the hypotenuse. Based on the 23 degrees, 19 is the adjacent. So A and H, remember the acronym SOCATOA, a and the H is with cosine. So let me write cosine of 23. So if you notice, I'm always going to start with sine, cosine, or tangent of the degree. So in this case, cosine of 23 equals, I know cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let me go 19 over X. All right, the X is at the bottom. So like the trick that I showed you earlier, let me make this two fractions, and I'm gonna flip both of my fractions. One over cosine of 23 is equal to x over 19. Okay, again, I want x on the top. That's why I flip my fractions. Now to get x by itself, let me multiply both fractions by 19. I know on the top of my, on the left side, 19 times one, it's just 19. So I have 19 over cosine of 23 is equal to X. When I see that for the calculator, because right, I'm gonna bring my calculator in a minute, 19 over cosine of 23, that's basically 19 divided by cosine of 23. Okay, so now let me do bring up my calculator. Again, I'm using the one you guys have in Canvas. Let me clear this out. And I'm just gonna go 19 divided by cosine of 23 equals, okay, 20.64. Okay, the four is not big enough. Remember, big enough is five or more. So yeah, that four is not big enough. So my answer would be 20. Point Six. Let me come back here. So twenty point six. Yep. Now let's take a look at number twenty two. I do have the hypotenuse. Based on the 34 degrees, I have the adjacent. So again, A and H, I'm gonna use cosine again. So I'm gonna do cosine of 34 is equal to X over 15. The X is on top, so that's good. Let me multiply both sides by 15. So I have that 15 times cosine of 34 is equal to x. 
So I'm going to just type that in. Let me bring my calculator out. 15 times cosine of 34 equals 12.43. Okay, so 12.43. I'm going to write it to one decimal place. So 12.43. I am going to be dealing with decimal places. All right, let's take a look at number 23. Let me move to red now. So 13 is the hypotenuse, right? Like I said, let me label the size that I have as in opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. So I have the hypotenuse based on the 60 degrees, X is the opposite. Now, I remember the acronym SO, right, from SOKATOA. That's the one that has O and H. So that means sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm just going to write sine of 60 is equal to X over 13. Okay. The X is on top, so that's easy. I'm just going to multiply both sides by 13. So I have that 13 times sine of 60 is equal to x. So now let me bring my calculator out. 13 times let's see, sine of 60, close parentheses, equals so it's 11.25, right? That five is gonna push the two up. So my answer would be 11.3. So my answer is 11.3, right? It was 11.25, so 11.3, okay? Last question, let's see, I have the hypotenuse. The X is the hypotenuse. Based on the 22 degrees, 13 is the adjacent. Okay. Remember the acronym CA. That means cosine. It's adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to say cosine of 22 is equal to 13 over X. I wish the X was on top. It's a little bit easier. But it's okay, I can make this into two fractions. Let me flip the fractions. One over cosine of 22 is equal to x over 13. Now let me multiply both sides by 13. Remember multiplication, I always put the 13 on top. So these 13s cancel out. On well, my fraction here, 13 times 1 is 13. So I have 13 divided by cosine of 22 is equal to x. All right, so let me bring out my calculator. Make sure you stay on degrees. Make sure you don't change that, OK? So let me erase all this. So 13 divided by cosine of 22 equals 12.02. Okay, that two is too small. So I'm just gonna say 14.0. Okay, let me come back here to my work. 14.0, right, the two was too small. Now, 14.0 or 14, right? The 0.0 is optional. 14.0 or just 14, that's the same number, right? So now, if you look at number 20, the answer was 11.8. Yeah, that 0.8 is not optional. Just when it's 0.0. .0.